I am going to jump right into this episode. First of all, I did a little teaser on this in our Instagram account. So if you're following me there on Instagram, and actually don't be confused, there are two accounts there. It's a long story. But the one where I post, the original posts every day are at Flipping50 TV, Flipping50 TV. There is a Flipping50 account now. By the way, I, I just couldn't get that at first. Someone else had it. And uh, we bought her out because it's my trademark. And yeah, yep, I had a buyer, even though it's mine. That's a wrong thing. But you may have seen this, at, at least a piece of it. So I'm going to dive right in because this is really an important thing for women who are over 40, but definitely over 50, even more if you're over 60. Because we've learned for decades that cardiovascular exercise is the thing that burns calories. So if we wanted to get a good workout in, we really needed to burn or earn some calories, we might default to cardio. And I'm here to tell you why that's not such a good idea. It's really never been a good idea. But now that estrogen is tanked, even if you're on HRT, I am. Yes. That's another discussion. We can talk about it later. But even if you're on it, your level of estrogen is not the same as when you were in your reproductive years. When when I was 30, you know, popping out that baby, right? It's just not the same as then. And that means that you need more muscle stimulus if you're planning to take that muscle into your 60s, your 70s, and your 80s, and your 90s. And listen, friend, life is going to be so much better if you do. So I would start planning on it. But here's the why and the what. And I'm going to state a couple of facts and I'm going to go right for this, not necessarily in any order. Normally, there's a script. Normally, there are notes and bullet points. And here, I'm going to give you kind of from the heart, from the memory of learning this 38 years ago, having taught this for 15 years at a university day in, day out, every semester, multiple classes, and echoing it in adult education and private training and coaching groups, as well as individuals. Strength training increases the size and the density of your lean muscle mass. Why do you want that? Muscle mass requires more energy than fat just to have you be, just to be, not to go and exercise, but to be, sit on the couch, lie in bed, sit here at your desk. Muscle mass requires more energy than does fat, which is inactive. So your energy expenditure or your calorie burn, in other words, goes up for every activity, even every inactivity, like sleep, You'll burn more calories overnight if you have more lean muscle mass. Now, listen, I'm talking about more. I want more. Don't you want more? We all want more, at least of the things we want. I'm not talking about losing weight, talking about gaining more. You can control that. And I know you may struggle a little bit to do some of the things like eating an adequate protein or eating adequate calories. We have to deal with that. But you can start lifting. And that is actually one way to start dealing with it. You're going to have a healthier appetite. So I'm going to repeat myself. Strength training increases the size and the density of your lean muscle mass. That's how it enhances or increases your metabolism. Muscle mass requires more energy than fat. So your energy expenditure or caloric burn goes up for every activity and inactivity, even sleep. All right. There are three ways that we really need to talk about the value of exercise for metabolism. And there is a difference, by the way, in what I said, energy expenditure, like how many calories did I burn in that half hour of mowing the lawn or in that half hour of doing a podcast and sitting still? And we often ask that. As a fitness instructor, I was in the classroom, in the studio, in the gym, multiple hours a day for 25 years. And when I closed the door on that and I said, nope, I'm out, 
The future is personal training and I can't do both. There's only so many hours of a day. I've never gone back. I've been asked many times. I've done a couple guest stints. I'll, I'll do a breakout session or a morning workout when I'm a keynote speaker somewhere as part of the package, but I don't teach group aerobics anymore. Now you see me, I do interval training for our cafe members. I do strength training, but to me, that's me to you. You're in my living room. I'm in yours. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to a group. I hope you don't hear me say, okay, you guys, I don't, I actually despise that, right? Because you're probably in the room alone, maybe you and your dog or you and your daughter or you and your granddaughter. But the point is, I am literally talking to you. If you have your earbuds in right now, I mean you. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Three ways exercise impacts your metabolism. Number one, this is the way we always think of exercise. Of course, while you're doing it burns calories. Now it burns more calories while you're doing it than it does after. That makes sense. I had to let that sit. That was a pregnant pause, right? And definitely burns more calories than before. Yeah. Let that sit too. It makes more sense. All right, but let's be honest. So if you're comparing cardio to strength training and we were going to do 30 minutes of each, even if we were doing high intensity interval training and, and, or walking, doesn't matter what we're comparing, there's probably a greater caloric burn to the cardio than there is to the strength training. 30 minutes of this, 30 minutes of that. Okay. Granted you win. That's true. However, that is not the real value of elevating metabolism. That's a short-lived thing. Let's say you do 20 minutes of high-intensity interval training. You know that by dinner time, if you've done that in the morning, your metabolism is no longer elevated. It's done. So unless you've made some real permanent changes in your metabolism otherwise, doing something else, which I'm going to hint strongly at coming up, you're not going to have a great benefit beyond that 30 minutes or 20 minutes that you're doing the interval training. It's just done. But if we compare the during burn, right, we lose a strength training, but strength training has a bigger impact after. And here's what we call that. So number one were three things I'm speaking about in the benefit of exercise and caloric burn, energy expenditure, or metabolism. You only get that boost of caloric burn from cardio exercise. During it, the biggest boost. And then for a short while after, depending on how long it was. Now, if you run a marathon, it's going to be a longer after burn elevated metabolism than if you go for a 30 minute walk. Even if you do 20 minute of interval training, it's not going to be hours or days, right? But the influence on that post energy burn, we call it the after burn. And scientifically it's called excess post oxygen consumption, post exercise oxygen consumption, meaning that while you're exercising, basically it's like taking a loan out of the bank because you're creating this oxygen debt when you first start. Your body needs it. All the muscles need it right now, but it's not there yet because you have to increase your respiration, increase your circulation. You have to get things going to deliver it. So you create a little oxygen debt. Then you do the exercise at a higher level than you're used to, right? You're breathing at a faster rate. You're breathing at a deeper rate. You're sending more oxygen, blood flow and oxygen to working muscles. And you're breaking down muscle. You're having micro tears in those muscles. Everybody does it. So don't be out there thinking, I don't exercise all that hard. It doesn't matter. If you do yoga, you have micro tears, promise. But that afterburn, you want to be grateful for, because think of it like, uh, interest that you have to pay on that loan you just took out. Your body is going to pay interest in that payback of excess caloric consumption, excess energy expenditure for hours, even for 
up to a day. So imagine you do a total body strength training session on Monday and on Thursday. I don't know why, but those are my favorite days. You're burning calories well into Tuesday at a higher level, well into Friday at a higher level. And there are other things that you can do to also enhance that and elevate your caloric burn. But that's a huge boost twice during the week, right? So, and yes, two really tough and challenging workouts, total body, far better than trying to wash things out by doing more, more days a week. I know you think more must be better. Nope, not so true. More just makes you tired, more ensures that you will not recover. So you're breaking down and breaking down and you cannot build muscle or lean or metabolism if you're constantly breaking down. And no, I hear you. No, if you do a body part on Monday, a different body part on Tuesday, a different body part on Thursday and Friday. No, because you're a woman in midlife, potentially, who's already partially exhausted. And that push of cortisol and the adrenal fatigue that comes with it, yes, exercise and exposure to cold and exposure to heat like infrared sauna, those stressors, short-term duration stressors can decrease cortisol, but not if you're a midlife woman who's already got a bucket that is overflowing with stress. If you're already feeling stressed, you can't exercise your way out of a hole. You've got to fill the hole up first. So super important. So let's go to number three, the long-term benefit of the exercise. You have to account for that. Because listen, it's not the 30 minutes that you're going to exercise any morning. It's the other 23 hours of the day. What happens then? How much more energy do you expend at rest? How much more if you do your high intensity intervals, you go for a walk? Not all that much, but how much if you do strength training? Far more, far more because we're changing permanently by increasing lean muscle tissue. We're increasing the muscle mass, more fibers we're recruiting. And the fibers that were already there, we're expanding, they're growing in volume. And all of that is super helpful, permanent. So those three things again, number one, it's how many calories you're burning during. Guess what? Doesn't matter. Number two and number three, those two benefits are far greater. You want to be thinking about how much afterburn is there and for decades. So don't ask me to pull this one out because I've been saying this for decades. This is not new news, folks. It's probably not mainstream enough, but this is one of these old things that I've been teaching at the university level since 1997, and it it was true then. Strength training creates a greater afterburn. It's always been known. So focus on that when you need a a workout and you have to choose one or the other, choose strength. And then long-term, which one of those is going to change your body composition permanently? Only strength training. Hit, you have to come after and do it again and again and again. That's it. And there's a little bit more risk of injury there depending on what you're doing. What you burn all day matters far more than what you do during 30 or 45 or 60 minute session, a change in your body composition that increases muscle and decreases fat ultimately because of it means more energy expenditure all day, every day. And here's the deal. Here's the benefit of strength training as well. Diets don't work. You know, oh, they do, okay, temporarily, till they don't, right? And we've been on that roller coaster probably by the time you're 50. You've been on a diet, you lost weight, uh, then you get it back because they don't work permanently. That's why the diet industry is so successful. They keep you coming back. But I also want to comment on why a lack of motivation might be true for some of you because it's probably one of the number two or three questions I'm asked. How do you keep your motivation? How do you get motivated? Part of the reason women aren't motivated, I will venture to say, is they're not eating enough calories. Nobody is motivated when they're tired. Your body will tell you you're tired. It will shut down. It will give you less energy to spend if you put less energy in. And that's true for those of you who are addicted to caffeine as well. Caffeine and then wine on one end and the other to wind up and wind down. Your body is not functioning on its own energy. It's just fake. So 
Think about how to make things easier. Start with strength training. Focus first on strength training and you will fare far better than anything else that you might do. Then drop that base in of walking. And yes, it's very complimentary. It can decrease your stress level. So there you have it, the rant. And right now, if you are not strength training, don't be crazy. Don't throw this next three months away. Start strength training in a way that really helps you. Stronger is open right now. It will close very soon, right? So if you're listening to this, you've got about four days, three, maybe when I release this to get registered, get started and or recruit a friend to do the same. I'm going to leave the link to that in the show notes, but it is this flipping50.com forward slash get stronger. There's no space between those words. And I am going to go right now and get this posted because I'd love to see you in there. And we can't put this off till it's convenient because it's not. Life is just not. Let's just do it well anyway. And I will see you on the flip side.